It's time for Tab Talks. I'm your host, Jennifer Rash. And I'm your co-host, Debbie Campbell. Alabama public school students and teachers learned March 26th that the rest of this school year would happen in their homes. All right, we were already doing this for a couple of weeks and everyone was good, but what do we do now? We have more, several more weeks to go and while the teachers and school administrators are working from their ends to figure out what what will we do? How do we make this happen? We had to guess here at Tab Talks that the parents might be um, worrying a little bit about what they're going to do. So we've been searching and found an expert, someone who knows <laughs> how to help parents <laughs> become immediate teachers in their homes. So we have with us Melissa Jordan, Director of Faith Community Christian School in Trustville, Alabama. Melissa, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. Okay, so we're thinking there's a lot of parents out there uh, fretting right now. What are we going to do? Yeah. How do we do this? I could do it for two weeks, but the rest of the school year, ah, give us some tips. All right. Well, here is my biggest tip of the day. Take a deep breath <laughs> and know that you are not going to ruin your child's education in eight weeks. <laughs> oh, okay. That would be a concern, I guess. Well, it That's is. Important. I mean, a lot of people are really worried about that, but if you think about it, our kids are in school for at least 12 years and many of them a lot, lot longer. And eight weeks, it, you're not gonna ruin anything. It's, <laughs> take a deep breath, everything's gonna be fine. Okay, so we've done that. Take the deep breath and yes. determine we're good. Yeah. What, else, what else would you suggest for really making this efficient and productive and, and okay. as best as they can? Absolutely, so remember, you're not, you don't need to recreate a classroom. Uh, when you're doing school at home, it's totally different. And for you guys, you, you didn't choose homeschooling and that's okay, but you guys can do it. I promise you can do it. Uh, my first suggestion would be to set up an area where your students can do school with very minimal distractions, say maybe at the kitchen table. Uh, you don't have to have a classroom set up. You don't have to have a desk. You don't have a lot of, have to have a lot of fancy equipment, uh, but you really do want it to have minimal distractions. I highly recommend uh, leaving the TV off during the day while they are doing school. Uh, I turned my ringer off when my kids were younger and I would try not to answer phone calls. Uh, it just tried to minimize those distractions. They're used to being in a quiet classroom where they could really focus. So try to help them with that. Uh, that would be, that would really help them out and give them a leg up. If you have multiple students and they're all sitting at the table together and they are distracting one another, an easy fix for that is to get one of those uh, folding, tri-fold science boards and setting it up on the table where they can't see one another. That can be huge. Okay. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so another thing you can do if you don't want to go to the store or you don't have to go buy that, just tape together some, uh, some folders and just kind of sit them up in front of them. Mm -hmm. That can really help them out. So it'd be almost like the cubes that we have in our offices. Yes. Make them their own little cubby, little cube, <laughs> they can decorate it and put pictures on it, you know, whatever they'd like to do. Ah, and that's something that can be taken down each day. Yes. And move. Yes. And I, I do recommend, you know, have them clean up their space at the end of school day. Have school, get it completed, uh, put everything away, and then come back to it the next day. And that way you're not in the classroom all day long. Now, if that works for your family and you like kind of going back and forth, then go for it. That's perfectly fine. But for students who are used to being in a classroom, I think that might be good for them. To have that, that makes me think of a lot of the, um, the people who are working for home, from home for the first time are, are saying some of the same things. They're having trouble balancing and, and knowing when one, one stop starts and one ends. So that makes me think of that as school could be the same way. There's a starting time and an ending time. Yes. So keep it very structured. Yes. And it, you know, every family is going to be different. And that's really important for everybody to remember is that some people do really well with structure and some people don't need as much structure. So do whatever works for your family. Um, 
you know, you may have be a family who wants to be doing school by 7 a.m. And you may be one who's like, you know, 10 a.m. is more our speed. Go for the 10 a.m. if you can. It's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, just do what fits your schedule and be flexible. Mm -hmm. um, that is important because you're going to have some weird days. These are weird times. Uh, kids are scared. Some parents are scared. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, everything's stressful. People, like, children are not in their security. Yes, they are because they're home, but they're used to being at school. And so there's a lot of security and knowing this is what I do. I get up every day and I go to school. So if you can help at home by having a set schedule somewhat, um, that will help a ton. And I have come up with a sample schedule. If you would like me to share that on the screen. Oh, yes. Thank you. Sure. And keep in mind with this schedule, let's see. Sorry, I'm learning. <laughs> ah, there you go. That? Yes. All right. So I've come up with a sample schedule and obviously you would want to adjust this to meet the needs of your family. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is like I have say 30 minutes on here for English. If you have a high schooler, they're going to need longer than 30 minutes. If you have a first grader, they're not probably not going to need a full 30 minutes, but they might. And every day might be different. This just kind of gives an idea, okay? Mm -hmm. um, one of our homeschool moms, Chantel, she posted a wonderful idea this morning on Facebook, and that is to come up with a daily anchor. So every day you have a type of anchor. It can be morning devotions, mm -hmm. prayer time. You can read books together. Um, something that you all know hey, everybody knows at this time every day we come together and we do this particular thing and give it a name, morning time, family time, devotion time. And knowing that you have somewhere to be at a certain time every day is gonna help your day go smoother. It's gonna give your kids that security of knowing what's coming. And it kind of helps your day flow better. And it also gives you guys some quality time together. And it seems like there would be some markers then you knew, you know, you know, when you've achieved the next step. Yes. You know what's coming. Like you said, I like the um, morning break, play outside, take a walk time. Tell me about, is that the physical education? <laughs> <laughs> certainly, it certainly can be, but you know, having the freedom at home, some kids really need to get up and move around and it's kind of helpful to them. Mm -hmm. So you sure could, but yeah, that is, that's your physical education. Yeah, I like the chores too. There's that responsibility yes. time and helping mom, who's Absolutely. now the dad, who's now the teacher. <laughs> yes, well, it and it's hard. There, it is difficult going back and forth from being mom to being teacher. Mm -hmm. um, so, one thing I definitely want to stress is to give yourself and your kids an abundance of grace. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be times they may just break down in the middle of math. It's okay. It happens. Um, and I say math because math is not my strong suit. So <laughs> I wanted to cry during math. Um, but especially right now when everything's kind of up in the air, mm -hmm. just, just know everything doesn't have to be perfect. You do your best. Your kids will do their best. And at the end of this, everybody's going to come out just fine. That sounds great. What if, okay. You, you know, you're the teacher, but suddenly you're having a really bad day and you think, yeah. help, I'm, I just need to get away for a minute. What do you yeah. do? <laughs> do you have any recommendations? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. If you are having a bad day, um, just forget what you were doing. Everybody go outside and just reset. Mm. And some of those days you're going to be able to come back inside after 30 minutes and get back to what you were doing. And some days you're not. Bake some cookies together. Sit down and watch a movie. Um, just spend some time together and just know that you're going to get all of these things done. Uh, and if you're having a bad day, just try to reset. You know, there's nothing wrong with letting the kids go to their room for 30 minutes, an hour, and just having some quiet time sit on their bed, you get a cup of coffee, kind of get yourself together, and it could really reset your whole day. Debbie, we may have to use that um, 
at tab when we get back together here at the office. Hey, I've got my <laughs> cup of coffee right here. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Uh, well, Melissa, thank you so much. This has been so helpful, and uh, we hope that all of you out there who are um, finding yourself in this new role will take some of these tips and um, be able to share with your friends as well. Thank you again for joining us, Melissa. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. And thank you all for watching and listening. We'll be back next time.